Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my new player guide for the Guardian profession. This is not a deep dive into the meta endgame, but an introduction to the profession's history, skills, weapons, and currently viable builds. Veteran players from the Guild Wars 2 subreddit community will also offer their advice and experience to help new players dive into this often misunderstood but brilliant profession. Here in part 1, I will cover the profession's archetype, history and overall game style. In part 2, we will look at its unique abilities and utility slot skills. In part 3, its current weapons and their mechanics. Part 4, I will drill down into specialisations and showcase the Guardian's currently viable builds for each game type. And finally, in part 5, veteran players will share with you their hard-won insights, tips and commentary. So let's jump into it. 250 years ago, as Alona was still reeling from the events of Nightfall and following the subsequent rise of Palawa Joko, the Order of Whispers expanded its influence to every corner of Tyria, bringing with it the ideals of the Paragon. These Alonan spearmasters embodied the virtues of honour, kinship, courage and righteous combat. Their teachings blended with other civilizations, and over time the Guardian was born. Now their ideals are heralded by all races, no matter their social philosophy or spiritual traditions. The Guardian was previewed on the 27th of January 2011, and was the first profession unveiled that was not present in the original Guild Wars campaigns. From a development point of view, Early iterations of the Guardian had less magical abilities and was originally called the Knight. Its final incarnation, however, incorporated magical themes from both the Monk and Paragon professions. It took its focus on party-wide buffs from the cheerleading Paragons, who were also a heavy armour profession. When thinking about gaming archetypes, the Guardian aims to fulfil the paradigm of the virtuous medieval knight, and its artwork, armour and animations live up to that promise. Having played Holy Warriors in other MMOs and RPGs, I can say the Guardian feels like a shining crusader on the battlefield and is very satisfying to play. You can be forgiven for thinking of the Guardian as a traditional sword and board meat shield, but this is not the case, although it is the game style many players have called for. Perhaps in future expansions we will see this, but for now you should temper your expectations in this area. There are a few newer builds which allow Guardians to tank, but I have to stress this is very situational and not considered optimal. If you are wanting to play a tried and tested monster piñata at endgame, you may want to look into the Mesma. I would also point out in casual play, you can use any build you wish. Only organised group content for raids, high level fractals and competitive PvP do you really need to dive into the meta or optimal builds, gearing and rotations. The Guardian can be played as a glassy melee DPSer, but for new players wanting a smooth levelling experience, I would recommend focusing on the profession's strong personal survivability. With its impressive selection of utility skills designed to mitigate incoming damage and bolstering boons, you will find solo play rewarding with little downtime and will be welcomed in any adventuring party. For levelling in PvE, Hammer and Greatsword are strong melee options, with Staff as your second weapon providing great monster tagging for Zerg groups, as well as boosting your movement speed and providing might for you and your allies. Melee combat in Guild Wars 2 can be challenging, and you need to pay attention to ground effects and enemy telegraphs, or regardless of your profession or build, you will find yourself in hot water fast. As a new player, you should also pay attention to enemy defiance bars, more commonly known as break bars. This mechanic was introduced at the launch of Heart of Thorns and requires players to use crowd control effects to mitigate it. Once the bar is depleted, the target is rendered vulnerable, 
They are either stunned, knocked down or exposed, causing them to take 50% additional damage for 5 seconds. As a guardian, you have access to a number of control skills, for example, Bane Signet, which is a hard crowd control knockdown. For Hammer users, the weapon skill is also a knockdown, and for Greatsword, you have Pull. These are but a few of the options available to you, and I will cover all Guardian skills by the end of this series. Being a heavy armour profession, Guardians have access to some of the most impressive looking armour sets in the game, in my most humble opinion. There are stunning cultural armour sets for frankly all the professions. For me it's hard to find a favourite here, but I think the Char and Silvare are standout examples. For tireless and dedicated raiders, the heavy armour envoy set is just stunning. And there are links to my showcase of all the Envoy armors in the top right hand corner of your screen for anyone who's interested in that lovely eye candy. Even the more easily obtainable armors are rendered with rich detail and will, I think, satisfy any RPer's dream of knightly splendor. So that's the end of part one of The Guardian. I know this installment is light on detail, but trust me when I say the other videos in this series will be brain-meltingly detailed. Please let me know what you love about the Guardian profession in the comments and what your favourite armour and weapons are. If you would like to link and share screenshots of your Valiant Crusaders, I would love to showcase them in the final episode of this series. If you are thinking of joining the Guild Wars 2 community, there are referral links below to both the free-to-play game and the Heart of Thorns expansion. Thanks to the generosity of ArenaNet, these referral links directly support my channel. I would also like to give a shout out to all those who support me on Patreon. You guys keep this one woman show up and running and I cannot thank you enough. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and a thumbs down if you didn't. And as always, thanks for watching.